on behalf of Shimar Joy Analytical India, I take privilege to again welcome all of you on this webinar on honey testing. Uh, without wasting a time, uh, we will go to the main subject. So in this presentation, I would like to take you uh, quickly through a possible workflow which can ensure quality, authenticity, purity and safety of honey. Honey has potentially a lot of uh, chance of adulteration uh, due to its demand and cost. Uh, as it is mostly used as an uh, ingredient uh, for its taste, nutraceutical and medicinal value, its purity and authenticity uh, is a major concern. Uh, uh, so after listening to this, our poor honeybee has come under a stress and uh, thinking how he can secure his honey uh, till it reaches to bottle. Uh, but no need to worry, uh, testing honey for its authenticity and adulteration is uh, uh, though difficult but not uh, impossible and it is a bit challenging. So honey has to go through a lot of rigorous test uh, before it is declared as a pure and authentic. Uh, this test involves uh, some fundamental test uh, to highly advanced test which requires uh, good technology and skill. Some of them are required to be performed for regulatory compliances and some uh, just for gathering more additional information about the honey. So after this presentation, uh, my colleagues will uh, take you in details of some advanced test methodologies and uh, ready solutions uh, which Shimarchu can offer you to achieve this challenge ta challenging task. Uh, I will briefly explain you some fundamentals but uh, informative test uh, which uh, needs to be carried out in routine laboratory checks and uh, comply the regulations. The first and foremost uh, simple and quick test uh, for honey is measuring its pH and acid value. Honey has its uh, pH always on slightly acidic side uh, due to presence of uh, the organic acids and amino acids on the minor side percentage. Uh, because of improper storage, tropical conditions or adulteration, the pH can uh, show sometimes lower values than expected range. A pH measurement requires a simple instrumentation like a pH meter or a potentiometer. Uh, the set limits as per the FSSI regulations for free acidity it's uh, less than 50 milliequivalents per kg of honey. In general, uh, pH range reported for most of the honey varieties uh, is lying between 3.4 to 6.1. So anything uh, to be on a more acidic side uh, can uh, give the alert for the adulteration possibility. The next is the moisture content. So moisture content is uh, also an important parameter uh, which can uh, define the quality of honey. As per the FSSI, the moisture content should uh, be less than 20% and uh, higher moisture uh, can indicate the possibility of the adulteration or the improper processing of the honey. So moisture can be measured by three different techniques. Carl Fisher or uh, which is a titrometric method or air balance method which is a weighing method and also by measuring the refractive index of the sample. Among this uh, IR balance uh, is the most easy and accurate method. Then going to next uh, it comes to specific gravity uh, which is generally a measurement of density of the sample. Uh, the lower specific gravity can be indicative of uh, possible adulteration or dilution. The limit set by FSSI is uh, a specific gravity should be not be uh, less than 1.35. So it can be performed by two different ways uh, using a simple hygrometer or by uh, weighment method again. So weighment method is more accurate and uh, than the hygrometer and also hygrometer sometimes require a more quantity of the sample. 
then uh, natural honey uh, along with the sugars have many minerals in small quantities uh, these are responsible to give the residual ash when the honey is subjected to heating at a high temperature generally above 500 degrees centigrade uh, the total ash content should not be more than 0.5 percent as per the FSCI limit the change in honey content and its uh, further compositional analysis uh, can give information about uh, its geographical origin and also a higher ash content can be a sign of uh, possible adulteration. So simple muffle furnace uh, can uh, be used to measure the ash content. Uh, honeybees are always uh, uh, carrying the pollen along with them when they collect nectar from flowers of the plant. So presence of pollen can give a better idea about the authenticity and the botanical source of origin, honey. So when honey is adulterated or artificially processed, it uh, loses its physical uh, nature and then uh, the pollen counts uh, decrease. So FSSI has set up a lower limit for pollen count as uh, 5000 count per gram of honey. If uh, honey contains more than 45% of a single type of the pollen, uh, then we can say that the honey is unifloral honey or it is a multifloral. So detailed investigation of this uh, pollen can help you in identifying botanical source of the honey and uh, this test will uh, require a simple uh, laboratory microscope uh, to measure. Uh, so the presence of uh, amino acids, organic acids and minerals in honey, uh, they can exhibit an electrical conductivity in honey. So variation in the conductivity values can be used to distinguish between the blossom and honeydew honey. So blossom honey always shows a lower conductivity values. Uh, FSSAI has set up a specification uh, which is uh, the conductivity should be less than 0.8 uh, millisiemens per uh, centimeter. Um, also when uh, this conductivity is compared or variation in the conductivity is compared along with the pH values then they uh, can indicate the possibility of the adulteration. And uh, for this uh, measurement uh, you require a simple electrical conductivity meter. Then uh, as you know the major part of honey is uh, made up of the glucose, fructose and some amount of sucrose uh, and uh, along with the other carbohydrates and uh, minerals and uh, uh, phenolic uh, uh, contents and phenylamines and other things. So measurement of total reducing sugar uh, can give a good idea about the quality and the purity of the honey. So this should be further but complemented by a direct measurement of glucose and fructose uh, and their ratios uh, using chromatography. Uh, total reducing sugars can be measured by classical titrometric methods. Uh, FSSA specification for total reducing sugar is minimum 65% to rule out the possibility of the adulteration. So honey also contains uh, some type of the enzymes uh, in a small quantity but uh, their activity measurement can be useful uh, to identify the storage conditions, freshness or purity of the honey. In honey it is measured in terms of the diastase activity uh, bec because diastase is a major reducing enzyme along with invertase and the glucose oxidase. It is also often correlated with uh, hydroxymethyl uh, furfural content in honey. The level of uh, diastase activity may reduce with uh, heat or on uh, long storage of the honey. It is a simple tetrametric method and needs no specific instrumentation in the laboratory. So generally it is measured in a shade unit uh, which is uh, developed by the scientist shade. And anything more than uh, three uh, shade unit can be considered as a, a good value.
then uh, sugars uh, being a major constituent in honey uh, an optical rotation measurement can give a very good information about qualitative differences uh, in honey very uh, varieties uh, for example honey dew honey shows uh, the extra rotation while the nectar honey shows the levo rotation uh, change in degree of rotation also can help uh, you to give a better information about a botanical source uh, of the honey or the blends um, this test is additional test so it has uh, no regulations uh, just to check the quality so this requires a simple polarimeter uh, uh, to measure the optical rotation Uh, just one more test uh, which can give a good quality information uh, but which has no regulations uh, and it's uh, it is a thermal property of the honey that is thermal profiling so in this case uh, the differential scanning calorimeter calorimeter can uh, provide the valuable information about change in the energy uh, uh, when the phase transfer happens in honey uh, when it is heated subjected to heat being a major constituent uh, the change in the sugar type can reflect in glass transition temperature change or the other thermal property changes and which can help in further uh, identifying the possibility of the adulteration so now we will go to the next stage and see what are the advanced techniques available for more accurate and detailed analysis of the honey Uh, as said earlier uh, the glucose fructose and sucrose constitutes around 70% of the honey sugars so their detail profiling and confirmation becomes necessary there are several chromatographic techniques and methods available uh, to measure percentage of these sugars in isolation uh, along with other ca saccharides and the sugars present in it so HPLC with RID detector is proven to be a simple uh, chromatographic method for measuring this while uh, GC and GCMS also can give a very satisfactory results uh, the only thing is that you need to have a derivatization of sample before uh, analysis there are some uh, published methods are also available uh, using uh, FTIR and MIR uh, FTIR and MIR as well as NIR regions uh, for this purpose uh, FSS has uh, set the limits uh, for sucrose uh, to maximum 5% along with uh, the fructose to glucose ratio between 0.95 to 1.5 uh, the change in these values can uh, flag towards the possibility of the adulteration Uh, hydroxymethylfuran uh, furfural that is the in detail we call it as HMF uh, uh, it is formed in honey when uh, it is heat, honey is heated uh, for dissolving uh, the externally added sugars or inverting the sugars so increasing their levels is uh, a good indicator of adulteration but uh, this can be a false positive as uh, sometimes improper storage condition or long st prolonged storage of honey uh, can also lead to increase in the value of uh, HMF uh, so the results are always to be correlated with uh, other values like uh, enzymatic activity or uh, proline content in honey uh, there are multiple chromatographic techniques like HPLC GCFID GCMS are available uh, which can measure the HMF uh, in honey there is a classical way of uh, measurement also available using the phase solution which involves the development of the red color when uh, it is treated with resorcinol hydrochloride but chromatography gives the more accurate and reliable results for quantitation as mentioned in the last slide the proline is the also an important indicator for checking quality of honey <coughs> though it is uh, present at a very low level in honey it is among the major amino acids uh, found in the honey 
So along with the phenylalanine and tyrosine, it becomes important to measure this amino acid. Uh, the decrease in the level of uh, proline can reflect uh, the changes occurred in honey due to the age or the adulteration. So anything which is less than 180 ppm uh, can uh, subject to rejection as per the FSSI regulation. Uh, the best measurement to for proline along with uh, measuring proline along with the amino, other amino acids is uh, simple HPLC with uh, RF detector or LCMS or LCMSMS technique. Uh, their honey contains sugar uh, from uh, generally from C3 C3 plant that is C3 pathway. Uh, so, measurement of uh, C3 and C4 sugar percentage in honey can give a better picture about possible adulteration in honey. Uh, the best way of measuring uh, a C3 and C4 sugars uh, in honey is uh, by using LC-IRMS that is isotope ratio mass spectrometer. This technique can be <coughs> very well uh, used for detecting C4 sugars like uh, corn sugars or cane sugars. Uh, but uh, the pure honey um, should not contain uh, C4 sugars more than 7% as per the regulations. Uh, but uh, this method has some drawbacks uh, wherein um, it's first of all its investment cost investment is high for this instrumentation and also uh, sometimes when the added sugars are from uh, again the C3 pathway uh, so that is like uh, from uh, uh, sugar beet or uh, rice syrup then uh, it can give you the false uh, negative results. Uh, in such cases, uh, the best way is uh, to identify or uh, screen for the markers coming from such sources. Uh, so for this uh, LCQ TOF or LCMSMS or GCMS or uh, and the NMR are the various better techniques uh, to be used. Uh, for uh, known marker screening like maltose, uh, maltotriose or 2-acetylfuran, uh, 3-glycopyranoside uh, that is AFGP which is coming from rice syrup or chlorogenic and uh, elagenic ac elagic acids uh, which are generally coming from acacia or rapeseed honey and other phenolic compounds uh, which uh, can be analyzed by simple HPLC with RID, PDA or ECD detector. Uh, but sometimes the uh, dry and tri polysaccharides also can be done by GCMS or GCFID. Uh, for unknown markers screening, we can use uh, high resolution mass spectrometers like uh, lcq -TOF. Uh, As a confirmatory tool, uh, we can use two-dimensional uh, NMR spectroscopy. Uh, yes, uh, we will now uh, see what are the safety testing we can perform. Ideally, honey should not have the food safety concerns uh, as it is uh, supposed to be directly isolated from the plant by bees and stored in the hives and uh, then taken out from there. But uh, there are certain incidents, some incidences observed that uh, where the honey samples have been contaminated, found contaminated with insecticides, herbicides, fungicides, etc. And this might be because the bees, when they migrate uh, uh, from one plant to a, a, a other, uh, may carry these uh, contaminants with them and finally contaminating uh, in honey. Uh, one of this source might be a biological pathway also uh, uh, if the plants from where the honey is taken uh, has been a uh, lot of pesticide has been used uh, there uh, in excess and uh, they, they are they got transferred to nectar uh, through the possible pathways and uh, also the improper handling or storage of honey uh, cannot be ruled out for this purpose uh, though FSSI has not yet set uh, the limits for residual pesticides in honey, uh, European uh, regulations have already set up the guidelines uh, for checking residual pesticides. 
So honey has to be tested when we export to Europe uh, for its conformity with EU MRLs. GCM SMS and LCM SMS can cover almost the complete scope uh, for required to test uh, these residual pesticides. Similarly, uh, high resolution LCQ TOF can be used uh, for screening of unknowns uh, coming in the honey. Uh, Shimarzu has uh, developed uh, very well ready meters uh, which can demonstrate much lower LOQs and which will discuss uh, which will be discussed in uh, detail in uh, our next presentations. Then coming next uh, to the antibiotics, uh, the antibiotics are generally used for controlling uh, bee brood uh, diseases and uh, uh, so that tetracycline, chloramphenicol, uh, sulfonamides and streptomycins are some of the major drugs among these. Uh, so these antibiotics can cause harm to human health if uh, consumed on a regular basis. So FSSA and uh, European regulations have set up the defined control lines uh, for uh, this residual antibiotics in honey. Uh, LCM SMS can cover complete scope of antibiotic uh, testing in honey and uh, they are most reliable and sensitive uh, methods. Uh, so coming presentation, next presentation, I uh, will give you the details of this also. Uh, how the honey uh, antibiotic can be tested uh, in honey by using LCM SMS. Honey can be contaminated, uh, honey can be contaminated by environmental uh, pollutants. Um, if uh, the region where the bee farming has been done uh, it is uh, or where it is extracted or processed or stored is polluted with these contaminants. Many times the honey found to be having presence of some of these pollutants depending on the detection uh, and level to be quantified. There are various chromatographic and elemental techniques also available. So Shimarzu has a very good analytical solution. Uh, for this uh, using its best in class uh, uh, ultra fast mass spectrometers and which can cover almost complete range of uh, this type of the contaminants to be analyzed in honey. So GCM SMS, LCM SMS can cover all organic pollutants uh, possibly present in honey uh, while uh, for heavy metal analysis and covering the scope of the heavy metal analysis uh, AS, ICPMS or LC ICPMS can be used. Uh, it depending on uh, the type of the element and the required detection limits. Codex uh, Elementarius has uh, set up some limits for heavy metals to be analyzed in honey. So apart from this uh, testing, you can also do a lot of other additional testing by using same laboratory setup uh, and uh, just uh, by adding some of the more hyphenated techniques and improve your product value. So we can identify and quantify presence of uh, vitamins, various vitamins or anthocyanins and uh, other phenolic compounds uh, which have their own nutraceutical or medicinal values. Uh, by using GCM SMS, LCM SMS and LCQ TOF which are the uh, regular laboratory setup instruments and uh, flavor and aroma from honey also can be analyzed by using hyphenated techniques like uh, Headspace GCMS or uh, comprehensive GCMS systems and uh, the variation found in uh, different aroma compounds uh, can also uh, he help in uh, understanding uh, the botanical, ori botanical origin or the geographical origin uh, uh, from where the honey has come. Uh, yeah, so after uh, listening to all uh, these analytical solutions, Honey Bee understands and he is happy that he can secure the quality of his honey uh, while going from uh, hive to bottle uh, through various uh, fundamental and advanced analytical techniques. And also he knows uh, where to go uh, for the solutions. Uh, we at Shimarzu can support uh, with 
all the best in class equipments except uh, those four equipments in right corner uh, right side corner uh, that is uh, microscope ph meter conductivity meter and carl fisher instrument all other instruments uh, uh, we can support you and which will completely cover the scope of honey testing uh, for domestic uh, uh, and international uh, compliance uh, regulations uh, additionally uh, at Shimarju we can additionally support you with uh, more uh, hyphenated techniques uh, uh, which uh, are like uh, headspace uh, or comprehensive GC uh, that is GC by GCMS and then uh, uh, LCICPMS or electronic nodes and 2D LCs and other things uh, which can help you in doing uh, further research in honey testing uh, and uh, also uh, add value to your product by studying the aroma and volatile compounds and uh, anthocyanins and flavonoids and other pa uh, components in your honey and uh, th this will obviously give you a good value to your product so thank you uh, basically uh, i would like to say uh, thank you for being uh, there and listening to my presentation uh, patiently so in this pandemic situation uh, i will suggest you don't forget to wear your mask uh, specifically when you are not uh, eating or testing any honey uh, so stay safe uh, take uh, most care of yourself uh, uh, thank you very much